women who have had hysterectomy that was a question should we do pap smear in them if women have had hysterectomy for a benign condition she does not need a pap smear but if a woman has had hysterectomy for early cancer condition she needs to be in the same protocol and needs to be followed up for at least 10 to 20 years the vaccination program what you want to launch in schools so it will be only for the girls like uh, or even for the boys like how you said it will prevent anal cancers and everything so if it is starting will it be like a campaign or will it be on a routine the uh, first step is here is the national program which is going to be introduced now which will be starting with the uh, a girls only kind of a campaign to begin with and it will be targeting the uh, school age uh, uh, girls to begin with the male uh, vaccination is at the moment not on agenda at least in the national campaign but this is something which can be done uh, all across the uh, UAE through private hospitals and uh, as we have already talked about it in the uh, presentation I will again re-emphasize that the male vaccination is equally important because it is preventing the uh, anal and uh, genital kind of cancers as well as the warts, uh, genital warts uh, in the males uh, directly and indirectly through the herd immunity it is protecting the females also. Other uh, thing which is going in favor of the younger population being targeted for the vaccination is that the immunity which is induced after the vaccination is the best in that age group. And in fact, uh, between the age of 9 and 15, if we start the series of vaccines, then they are uh, two doses of vaccines are enough. Uh, whereas after that age group, it becomes a three uh, uh, dose kind of a schedule. Mm -hmm. So it is uh, worthwhile to uh, focus on this kind of a strategy uh, all across the genders uh, and all across the society. So it will be like a mass immunization campaign or will it be like uh, uh, related only to the age? Uh, so. No, uh, mass immunization campaign is something uh, where uh, usually the government is involved because uh, it is uh, the vaccine itself is uh, uh, the one uh, important barrier for the vaccination is about the costing. So that part at the moment it is still not uh, uh, being offered free of cost to all the population uh, in general. But uh, uh, on their own, the parents can definitely focus on this kind of a protection because the, uh, this is one of the few uh, uh, vaccines which is offering such kind of a important protection against a life-threatening kind of a disease uh, like a cancer. So uh, the awareness of the parents in this uh, regard and their own action plan will be more important rather than expecting someone else to uh, take that kind of a thing. But the uh, role of the healthcare uh, associations will be to uh, make it available on different uh, kind of places. So who will be, I mean, who will be deciding like it will be two doses or the three doses which is required for the child? That is as per the uh, guidelines it will right. be decided. It is okay. not something which is arbitrarily okay. decided. It is as per the age group guidelines it will be decided. Okay. Sir. And what about uh, the ladies sir, if they have not been vaccinated till date like? For women, yes, definitely you can take the vaccination. Okay. okay. It guidelines say that, that I, the vaccination should be given earlier the better because it protects your immunity it builds up your immunity at an early stage because this disease is a disease that progresses okay. but if you have not taken it and you're already sexually active yes. you should still take it oh, at least up to the age of 26 you must okay. in fact even up to the age of 45 okay. but there are some risks and benefits cost issues mm -hmm. the protection issues are there mm -hmm. those that area is still a bit gray Okay, but still, it's better to take the vaccination. And also remember, human papilloma virus, uh, there are low strains and high-risk strains. The high-risk are the one that causes cervical cancer. The low-risk one ca causes the other conditions of genital warts. The vaccination covers almost all of these strains. Okay. So if you have been detective positive, low-risk for certain conditions, 
you still can take the vaccination because you will protect yourself from the other strains. Right. So it's better to take the vaccination. So what is the maximum age we can uh, advise the lady to go for it? If, if uh, like I 45. said, 45, 45 uh -huh. yes, from 26 okay. to 45 is still a gray zone. Uh -huh. Like I said, it, the cost-benefit ratio should be taken into consideration uh -huh. and decided. Like you said, uh, it can prevent anal cancers and other uh, genital warts in the male. Uh, will this be able to prevent vaginal cancer also for the ladies? Well, vaginal cancer, not yet gone into that so much. Okay. But it's caused with genital warts. That's so true. possibly, yes. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Actually, your question is quite valid, madam. Like, uh, <coughs> HPV vaccine definitely prevents from cervical cancer, but till now it is up to 70%. Still, we miss a chance of being at 30%. So it is always that uh, taking just HPV virus doesn't make you in a comfort zone. Rather, uh, with HPV vaccine also, you should go for regular HPV testing as Madam has suggested. And uh, second, one more question which you are asking is, what she was asking? Booster. Uh, there is as such uh, no booster dose. Rather, we are trying to minimize the doses. Like uh, uh, when the from 9 to 15 years of age, only two doses of cervical vaccines are needed. So as such, there is no booster dose for vaccines. So after 30, you said you need to uh, do a pap smear plus HPV, right? Is it like if the uh, pap smear is negative, you need a HPV again? See, the, the, the protocol now is from the age of 30 to 65. There are two types of protocols. You can do pap smear alone yes. once in three years. And if the pap smear shows some abnormality, then call the patient and do an HPV test. Otherwise not required. Huh? Otherwise not required. Otherwise no. Okay. But, uh, and there's another protocol which says do both together once in five years. It all is a matter of insurance and costs. Okay. Okay. Thank you ma'am. But to be on safer side, it's better to do what is the five years protocol, like you go for a pap smear screening with HPV testing also. That will be more definitive and confirmative with the Texas. No, the campaign uh, that uh, is Right Parenting is uh, centered around health education on various fronts and various topics. So cervical cancer will be one of the important topics on which we will be uh, trying to interact with the parents on different platforms and there we will be talking about the same things what we talk today and making them aware that it is a preventable kind of a cancer. The vaccination program is very important for their kids that it needs to be done also for the males uh, to give that benefit also to the females and uh, these kind of uh, awareness uh, campaigns have been found because in some studies it has been found that it is how the message is conveyed to the parents makes that difference because the way in which the conveyance of that message happens it depends uh, uh, de uh, on that and uh, it decides almost 50 percent of the vaccinations which have happened in the hesitant kind of parents uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, people who are uh, hesitant for giving that vaccine to either themselves or for the kids, it is through a good kind of a communication and education of that parent. So I think this program will be important in that respect. Okay, thank you. Thanks. We'd love to invite our Zulekha Knights, our very courageous Zulekha Knights. Three of them are with us. May I welcome Madam Shabnam first to share her experience. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to share my, the journey. My journey from last July till now. Uh, I am a person who captures moments in pictures. So I have uh, managed to capture all the moments from last July from my, throughout my journey of cancer treatment and have uh, made a small video which I would like to share with you.
I am a teacher in Cambridge International School, Dubai. And when um, I sat down to pen my thoughts to share with you all, um, I came across this thought that words do shape our thoughts and emotions. And when we are connected to this disease, is the words that is fearful, nothing else. That's my experience speaks of it. The words that are associated like oncologist, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, all these are fearful words. Once you conquer that, you will conquer the disease. That's my experience. I ask, uh, ask myself, who am I? Am I a patient, a survivor, a fighter? These are the words that are associated always. Yes, I call myself a fighter, not because I'm fighting with my body, but because I rephrase it. I handled my situation better. I did not fight, I handled my situation. I call myself a survivor. Does it mean that I had faced my own, it means that I have faced my own fears and I have survived the situation and I have come out courageously. Yes, without doubt, I am a patient and I will be a patient. I have realized that. And the first important thing is acceptance. Unless and until you accept that you are a patient who is undergoing something, it's like some other normal disease. It's not something, uh, as I told you, it's the words that create the fear. It's not the disease. If you overcome that, you overcome everything. Yes, I, was, I am a patient, but I have never felt ill. I have only felt weakness during my chemo sessions. So I survived that and I have overcome all those things. Yes, thank you. I call myself brave as well. The definition of brave is a person who chooses to fight a challenge. Here I didn't have a choice, but still I didn't give up. I, choose, I chose not to give up. That was my courageous uh, attitude. As I told that hardships always make you realize the potential that you have, the resources that you have in your body that can help you overcome all these things. Of course, it's not just a journey or a fight that I have done alone. There were people who are associated with me who made my journey very easy for me. And without doubt, my thanks, heartfelt thanks is for them. So, as I said, everything is associated with the words. But then, of course, some words do hurt. When I read that he or she has lost her, lost her life to cancer, I don't agree to that. It's not a losing battle or it's not about losing or anything. It's because someone had succumbed to a disease like any other disease because that person wasn't strong enough. If you are strong enough from within, you can overcome even this, just like a fever or a cough or a um, cold, that's it. And with the advanced techno technology and with the advancements that's going on, of course, there won't be a day far ahead when this word cancer will not be in our dictionary. It's going to be overcome. Yes, talking of words, the most important words are the words spoken by the doctors who you are associated with. And I have been very, very lucky to be associated with Zuleka Hospital and the doctors and the, his team of uncles, nurses, who have been excellent in their support. I extend my thanks to Dr. Pranay, who has with me throughout my chemotherapy and it has made my life very easy. And of course, his team of oncologists are angels sent by God who have helped me heal. I've, I have been lucky enough to find a doctor and his team who have, uh, who have always respected me as a human being, not just a patient. And that's what is very important because this bonding is not just for the time of the treatment, it's a lifetime bonding. That 
always is there with associated with this type of disease yes and also i believe what doesn't kill you makes you stronger i have come out like a very strong person i have um i'm in a way ironically thankful that i have i had this disease because it has changed me a lot i have seen in myself a lot of things which i had never uh, realized i value life i of course i am alive that's the greatest thing in the world nothing can compare that yes and i own my own journey that's the most important thing for me and i have started believing in the legend of the phoenix you might have heard about the bird phoenix that regenerates itself from its ashes and i am such one phoenix i feel that <laughs> i would like to extend my thanks to zuleka hospital and the able administration though i have not been associated directly with them but of course my stay in zuleka dubai has been far from being very 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 uncomfortable as hospitals are it has been very warm and welcoming as if i have i am coming into a hotel and um, visiting doctors visiting friends and spending some time and going back it has been that very comfortable and i uh, thank uh, the administration dr zia dr chandrashekar dr najib and their amazing team of administration administrative people zuleka dubai is of course i would recommend anyone to be here for the treatment just not for cancer any other treatment it has been from the reception as well as till the chemo room it has been very very comfortable journey yes i have developed this attachment and it will be there for a lifetime and thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to talk in front of you and also to share my journey thank you so much thank you thank you so much may i request miss rasha please to share her experience assalamu alaikum uh, ana alhamdulillah najia wa muhariba sabiqa li saratan anq al raham habba asharikum qisti li hiya ibtadat ma dakhuli lil dawla وكانت عباره عن يوم طبيعي ابتدى من مكالمه مع والدتي وكنت اشتكي من الم بالظهر فبدون اي سبب قالت لي روحي اعملي تشييك عند دكتوره نسائيه وسال صديقتي ما كنت اعرف اي مكان فقالت لي توجهي على مستشفى زليخ الشارقه وفي الدكتور منى منى زكريا وفعلا توجهت ما كنت عندي اي تامين وما كان عندي اي شيء توجهت عند الدكتور منى زكريا وكنت تحت التشييك معاها فطلبت مني مسحه عنق رحم الصراحه انا كنت اجهل شو يعني مسحه عنق رحم فقلت لها دكتور انا ما عندي اي تامين ولسه انا داخله جديد على الدوله ما لي شهر او اقل من شهر فالدكتور الظاهر انها تعاطفت معي او انها الحاله كانت جديه بين ايديها فقالت لي لا اذا انت ما عندك الفلوس الكافيه للمسحه فانا بعمل لك اياها وبتيجي بوقت ثاني وبتسددي فلوسك حسيت الموضوع جدي فقلت لها لا اوكي عملي لي المسحه وفعلا تمت المسحه وبعد 8 ايام بالضبط جاني تليفون من المستشفى طلبوني للمستشفى بحاله طارئه فانا كنت يعني حسيت بالخوف حسيت بالارتباك انه المستشفى عم بتكلمني وانا عامله مسحه عندهم فشو السبب توجهت عند الدكتور وكانت اللحظه اللي هي عم تحكي لي فيها انه بتطمني انه لا تخافي موضوع طبيعي بس انت في عندك تغيرات وانت محتاجه انه نحن ندخل اكثر بعمل ثاني اللي هو عمل خزعه فانا باللحظه قلت لها دكتور يعني شو معي قالت لي نحن ما فينا نحكم انت شو معك نحن محتاجين الخزعه للتاكيد وفعلا ما كملت عند الدكتور انا بمستشفى زليخ لعدم وجود تامين فاخذت تحويل على مشفى توام وابتدت المشروع اللي انا كنت فيه هو مشروع علاجي الحمد لله الام اصعب شيء يمتحن الانسان بامومتها
الحمد لله انا امتحاني كان بمكان الامومه عندي وانوثتي ف وما كنت فاهمه وما كان عندي الوعي الكافي لمرضي او المرحله اللي انا فيها انا مثل اي انسان كنت افتكر سرطان يعني موت في بدايه علاجي ضعفت ضعفت لدرجه اني تخليت عن اولادي انا عندي طفلين تخليت عن امومتي معاهم لانه اعتبرت اصابتي هي موت خلص انه انا راح اموت فصرت اعودهم على غيابي وهذا شيء خطا لانه بعد وجودي مع دكتوري وفهمني المراحل انه في علاج في امل انت بدوله متطوره فيها علاج في كثير اشياء وفي لك فرصه بالحياه مهما كان السرطان قوي عند الانسان فهو له علاج ابتديت افهم ابتديت احس انه في لي فرصه بالامل رجعت اتمسك باطفالي اللي هم كان عمرهم خمس سنوات وثلاث سنوات رجعتهم لحضني ورجعت ابتدي معهم حياه حلوه أنا ما كان لي أي أحد هنا بالدولة، الحمد لله صار لي أصدقاء، صار لي معارف، صار لي أهل. والحمد لله تشافيت. الحمد لله تشافيت بسبب الأول هو فضل رب العالمين، والسبب الثاني اكتشاف الدكتورة اللي هو الدكتورة منى زكريا بمشفى زليخة لهم الفضل. والسبب الرئيسي مقومات الدولة اللي هي عالجتني واحتضنتني، الحمد لله أنا كمقيمة كنت أحس نفسي بنت بلد وبالنهاية بتمنى بتمنى ومن كل قلبي دعاء الشفاء لجميع المرضى والصحة للسليمين وبوجه الشكر للأستاذة خولة والأستاذة أمل أنا موجودة بجمعية أصدقاء مرضى السرطان بالشارقة وهم الحين لهم إلي أهل لأنه أنا بلد الحمد لله هم أهلي بس أنا بلد غربة والحمد لله رب العالمين على كل شيء والله يديم الصحة للجميع وشكرا لكم وآسفة Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen uh, I'm gonna give a brief translation about Miss Russia's story uh, Basically Miss Russia it was a regular day she was on the phone with her mom and she was start having a back pain so her mom advised her to go see an ob -gyne. And she consulted with one of her friends, and her friends advised her to go to Zuleikha Hospital in Sharjah. And then she came and she met Dr. Muna, our ob -gyne. And the doctor, uh, she advised her to do a pop smear. At that time, uh, Russia, she was only one month in UAE, and she didn't have any insurance. So she couldn't afford the test, so Dr. Muna told her, uh, it's fine, we can go easy with the payment, that's not the issue. The most important thing is that we need to know that you're okay. So she told her that you can do the test now and worry about the payments later. So she did the pop smear and after a couple of days she received a call from the hospital telling her it's kind of an emergency, please come to the hospital now. So she came, she was a little bit worried uh, and the doctor told her, the doctor comforted her, Dr. Muna, and told her there's no reason to worry. Uh, but we saw some changes and we just want to make sure by doing a um, biopsy. So she did a biopsy and it was uh, diagnosed positively with cervical cancer. Now as a mom of two, at that time her kids was five and three uh, years of age. So as most of the people that she said that uh, when, when, when they associate the words of cancer, they immediately think that this is like a death sentence. So she started to um, dislocate herself as a mother from her kids, preparing herself that she is going to lose them. Uh, she, um, she took her chemotherapy and she did uh, three surgeries and uh, now she's uh, cured completely from cervical cancer. And, uh, and she just wanted to say special thanks to Zuleikha Hospital Sharjah, to our team, to Dr. Muna especially, who helped her on the transition phase of accepting the fact that she's a cancer patient. And all the insurance that um, cancer is just like any other disease right now, it's curable in a different stages. And uh, she also uh, sent a special thanks to UAE, saying that uh, they are helping all the healthcare sectors by providing them with the state-of-the-art technology when it comes to cancer. 
And uh, on special thanks, she would like to thank Ms. Amel and Ms. Khawla from Friends of Cancer uh, because they will be her family and a support system uh, since she started her journey with us. And she's very thankful on the government of UAE and to Zuleikha Hospital and especially. So thank you, Rasha. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for coming here this afternoon. I know everybody is busy and has things to do, but uh, I'm so happy all of you could make it. I hope this session was uh, informative and interactive and that uh, all of you are here as messengers really and that from this session you will uh, take the message of uh, cervical cancer, of ways by which detection is almost like a cure. The earlier you detect the cancer, the better your chances of uh, uh, curing it for yourself, for your family members. Um, but anyway, coming back to the main thing, um, I want to take a quick moment to thank our chief guests for this afternoon uh, from FOCP. Uh, thank you for coming here. Thank you for supporting this endeavor. Um, I want to thank Dr. Raj Lakshmi. Thank you, Dr. Raj Lakshmi. Thank you, all the panelists. Your information has been vital. I think. Um, an integral part of cervical cancer is, you know, vaccin vaccinations. Uh, so I'd like to thank the pediatrician. I'd like to thank Dr. Pranoy for his reassuring words about cancer is not a death sentence. And uh, it's really important to have him uh, say that to us, to reassure us that uh, even if you are detected with the cancer, uh, you will survive. And I think that's a new message in cancer. The message with cancer always has been, it's a death sentence, but now we know better. But really, the way in which to make everything better is early detection. And better opportunities for cure, less suffering, less pain. Um, so thank you, Dr. Pranay, for this wonderful news. Um, and, and of course, uh, vaccination. Doc, thank you, Dr. Mandar. Uh, the news that we should be vaccinating um, HPV vaccinations are available um, and anybody who isn't doing it for their children really it's it's uh, I think it's it's the criminal neglect of your children and of a reality that we should all be facing um, I want to thank all our sponsors uh, and partners for this event uh, thank you everyone thank you for uh, coming on board and supporting this it is Zuleika Hospital's wholehearted wish that uh, we see a complete eradication of this cancer in the next 20 years, I hope. And I'm, I'm happy to know that all of you are going to be my partners in this endeavor. Um, I want to thank the survivors. The, your stories are amazing. When you're coming here, you're alive and you're healthy and you're beautiful and strong. And it's an inspiration for all of us that we too could be like this. Thank you so much. Last but not least of all, I want to thank, as I always do want to thank, the two most important women in my life. I want to thank Dr. Pamela Munster for being the brand ambassador for this cause. Uh, her support, as always, is invaluable. And her push for awareness and cure of, of cancer everywhere is uh, really, and for uh, women's cancers particularly has been a lifelong endeavor on her part. And last but not least of all, I would like to thank Dr. Zulekha Daud. <laughs> the person who's made all of this really possible. Thank you so much. Thank you, madam. That was wonderful. In conclusion, we have this new facility in Zulekha, Dubai. We'd love you all to take a tour of it. We have our colleagues to guide you. Thank you one and all for joining us today. And let's hope we get to eradicate this condition called cervical cancer. Thank you very much. <laughs>